What is happening, everybody, on YouTube and Facebook? Steve again with Rake and Profit over at rakeandprofit.com. Coming back to you with another live video. And first and foremost, just want to thank everybody for tuning in and taking your time out of your day to, uh, you know, hang out with me for a little bit. If you saw my post on Facebook, I pretty much said that um, I'm going to be doing a live hangout and researching three brands. And I asked you folks to um, give some suggestions on some brands to, you know, research and study up together. And I chose three brands. And uh, just thanks again for, uh, you know, participating. And uh, we're going to have some fun tonight for a little bit. Not too long, but we're going to research these three brands, take a look at different styles of items that are selling within these brands, what the price points are, consider some sell-through rates, and just um, you know study up together so we can be more successful when we're selling clothes. But first and foremost, before we get into the, um, the video and the researching, I just want to ask you folks to um, take a minute to leave a comment and let me know if you could hear me okay and if you could see the screen. I'm hoping that it's not showing me right now because I want to make sure that you could see my eBay screen because we're going to look at these brands. So leave a comment and uh, let me know if um, if you could see me okay bear with me for one moment alright I want to check out these comments real quick and see what is happening here Already one like, B A H L L I N. Can't pronounce your name. Oh, okay, it's Ballin. All right. Already one like. Excellent. Cool toads in the house. Naturally, my wife wants to go out. Laugh a lot. I told her you were going to be on, but I didn't want to work. I'll catch it later, bro. It's all good, man. Don't worry about it. But, um, all right, yeah, leave a comment. Let me know if you could hear me okay and you could see my screen. Um, and we're going to get into this hangout. Just gonna wait one moment to see if we get some comments to see what is happening here. But yeah, I uh, I chose three brands off of Facebook. If you're just tuning in, so we're gonna be studying three brands tonight, and uh, you know, looking at the styles, the price points, and uh, just getting more accustomed. So we're gonna get into it in one moment. Just want to make sure everybody could hear me okay. Hearts Pickers, aka Hearts Motor Company, in the house. If you guys aren't subscribed to Ronnie over at Hearts um, Hearts Pickers, definitely check him out. I mean, he is a magnificent reseller of clothes and a lot of other items as well. He really does a good job with his items and his sales, and just somebody I look up to. So uh, definitely excited to have you in the house. We actually got together the other day, and uh, we went picking throughout Connecticut, actually throughout Massachusetts and Rhode Island, I believe. My bad, and uh, you know we found a few good things. The prices were a little high at these savers. Uh, I wish we would have had a 30% off card, but still had a lot of fun. We also met Chris Green, so that was awesome. Had a little hangout with him and talked some eBay and Amazon. Harold Rumet's in the house. Sounds great and can see things okay. All right, sounds good. Dan Wright, see your screen and hear you very well. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate that. E. Wagner looks good. What is happening, my friend? All right. So um, it looks like we got some people in the room. Let's see how many people are watching right now. We've got 18 people in the room. So uh, let's get started. So the first brand that we're going to be studying, and this is a brand that I don't really mess with much. I haven't really researched it too much. I haven't really looked at purchasing it, but I know it does have potential, so I'm really glad that um, Tom Bear actually brought this up. Shout out to you on Facebook for uh, mentioning this brand. And I don't know if I'm going to pronounce the brand correctly, but it's Victorinox. Let me type it on the screen for you. That's how the brand is uh, spelled, so definitely uh, check that out. We're going to pop this into the uh, eBay search engine and see what happens. So right now I'm under the clothing, shoes, and accessories category, and um, I'm just going to type the brand in. We're going to keep all the different styles up, casual shirts, dress shirts, jeans, pants. We're just going to see what pops up for the brand, but there is one thing that I'm going to want to do first beforehand. I'm going to scroll down the left side and type in or click the pre-owned section because personally for myself a lot of the items that I find to resell are pre-owned you know going to the thrift stores yard sales 
um, if you buy off Craigslist or Facebook groups, wherever you wherever you go, but I'm mostly thrift stores. It's um, you know, 99% of the time it's pre-owned. So I'm gonna click that to make sure anything that pops up is pre-owned and it's you know showing prices that uh, match that. Also, you don't have to do this, but I'm just gonna click U.S. only for now, just so there's no weird currencies popping up. You don't have to do that. And um, all right, I'm gonna paste in this brand, Victorinox. I'm not sure how you uh, pronounce it, but uh, let's see what pops up. Let's see what we could find. And also, one more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click the uh, the sold listings because I just want to be studying up things that have sold. You could also click completed listings, and that'll show you things that have sold, and also show you um, listings that have not sold. So that could give you a better idea of you know sell through rates and how often they're selling. But for this example, we're just going to click the sold listings. And let's refer back real quick to the uh, the comments just to see what's going on in here to make sure everything's running smooth. Appreciate all the likes. Looks like we got 10 likes so far, almost up to 11. We only have 20, 20 watching. So uh, thanks a lot for that. I appreciate it. Ballin said, Steve, just did a quick tie haul on my channel. You should check it out. Lots of brands for really cheap that have massive profit potentials. Absolutely. I'll check that out right after this video. Everybody watching as well, definitely check that out. Hearts Motor Company said, all set with no seeing you. Yeah, I look like a mess today. I was on a bike ride and went off trail into the woods. I ended up getting something in my eye. I don't know what it was, but one of my eyes is like all red. I look like a hot mess right now. Thrip Shop Maven in the house. Sounds good. Ball and all is well, Steve, but what if one person couldn't hear you? Would you stop and try to fix it for that one person? <laughs> I might I might just do it. You never know. And uh, Tortoise Picker in the house, what is happening? Kentucky Tycoon, check him out on Facebook. He is always uh, posting some really crazy items. He's really uh, an awesome guy right there. Luke Follett in the house, have started out doing this Goodwill picking thing about how much profit could I make a week hitting up multiple Goodwills. It really depends, honestly. You can make anything from zero to $10,000. I mean, I know people who make a lot of money and I know people who don't. Um, a lot of it has to do with taking action and you know going out consistently and learning. But um, it really depends. The sky's the limit. It's up to you. I'd rather do this than get a summer job. I know it's what you put in exactly, and uh, I'm willing to put more effort into this than an old summer job. Well, yeah, go for it. I mean, you could absolutely uh, make more money um, doing this than a summer job. I can guarantee that if you really go at it hard and educate yourself. Melissa Corpru, sound is good. Looking forward to this. All right, let's get into this video right now because I'm actually um, – I'm not really full of energy now. I'm kind of tired, but I'm going to bang this out and uh, maybe do like a half-hour hangout. So um, let's see. Where am I? All right. So we're studying the brand Victorine Victorinox. I don't know how to pronounce it. You see how it's spelled on the screen. And uh, let's just check out some things that have sold. Looks like we have a lot of two uh, shorts, mesh lines, swim trunks, 1550 Here we have a – this looks interesting. Sold for $24. Looks like it's size extra large, embroidered, half zip fleece pullover. Check that out. Looks to be unworn men's adult half zip pullover fleece. And there's the tag for any for everybody watching. Uh, it's kind of got that little symbol on it, and. Um, you can see how it's spelled and everything. Keep your eye out for that tag. Again, I'm not sure if this brand is, you know, something that you're going to want to be looking out for. We're going to do some more research. I've heard of it before. Uh, I've never, I've never bought or sold it before though. But it looks like this uh, half zip fleece pullover went for $24.99. Up for auction is this Harley, if ever worn, Victorinox extra large black fleece half zipper pullover jersey. I'm not sure why they're calling it a jersey. Uh, it just looks like a fleece has the little zip on the front. All right, that looked interesting. Keep your eye out for that type of item. Looks like we have another fleece here uh, made by Polar Tech, which is always good. I see those on the LLB and sometimes $29.99. And uh, I didn't set the prices on the side. Usually when I'm doing sold listings, I'll, I'll set like a guideline for prices. So maybe if I'm studying the completed listings, I'll set the lowest at like 20 or 30 uh, just to make sure I'm seeing quality items. But for this example, I'm not going to because I want to get a feel for you know, if things are selling, 
for a high enough profit margin because that's definitely important. You don't want to get into these brands that only consists consistently bringing you in five or six or seven bucks. It's not going to be worth your time. But from first glance, it looks like these things are going pretty well. I do see a polo shirt right here. Only went for nine fifty, but it did take in seven dollars to ship, which only is going to cost you three dollars if you ship at first class. So that's not bad at all. So far, this looks like a pretty decent brand. Uh, we have a button front shirt right here. Looks like it only brought in six fifty. And a lot of times you're going to notice if you're selling clothing and you're putting it up for auction and you're starting it at a low price like this example right here. I'm not sure what they started it at, but they only they only got six fifty. I'm guessing they started at ninety nine cents. A lot of times when you do auctions with uh, clothing, it's not going to bring you in a lot of money most of the time. You know, of course, if it's like something really popular, it will. But a lot of times, um, I really like to use the buy it now and just set my price and wait for it. Looks like we got a vest that brought in twelve fifty, another polo shirt, fifteen. Looks like we got a nice sweatshirt. This looks interesting. Twenty ninety nine. Looks like it's got a little embroidery on the shoulder, uh, on the sleeve. It looks like it has a zipper on the sleeve. That looks nice. Has the logo on the front. I mean twenty ninety nine plus five seventy five to ship. Looks like it has some type of patches on the elbow. That's nice. I mean, very intrigued so far with this brand. It, it seems to do well. Um, you know, it's not selling for incredible profits. And depending on what your business model is and what profit margins you stand by, this could or maybe it could not work for you. Um, but for most people, I notice, especially if, if they're new, they're willing to sell anything between ten to twenty dollars. And this definitely fits the mark. But when you get more advanced, like I like to sell things for more than thirty now, and I. I know Hart's Motor Company. He likes to sell it for like over forty or fifty. His pro his profit margins are really high, um, but it really depends on your own business model. Here we have another polo shirt in this brand. It went for twenty. A few, uh, as you see, these auctions. If if you start it low, a lot of times if it's not popular, like I said, it's not going to bring in a lot of money. What else we got here? You see, this is interesting. Like a nice jacket. It looks like four ninety five retail. Wow. I have to check that on the website to see if that's really accurate. But I didn't think this brand was that expensive. Four hundred ninety-five dollars. Black men's jacket, worn very little. So this is used. Brought in forty-eight dollars, five bids. So there was definitely some interest. Six dollars to ship. The uh, the seller did a really nice job at taking pictures. It looks pretty clean. There's the tag again, size medium. Interested to see what material this is. If I was to guess, I'd say polyester or nylon. Um. I don't really see anything. See, they didn't really put any any information. They probably could have got more if they put the measurements. I don't see the measurements anywhere. I don't see the the material unless it's on the tag. Okay, so it's 100% nylon. Nylon seems to do well. So 48 bucks, um, a decent listing, but still, I think they could have brought more if they put some more uh, details in it. Let's check out the comments real quick. See what's going on here. Shout some people out. If you like these videos, guys, hit that like button right now. Let me know if you like it. Um, you know that's the best way for me to gauge if I should keep doing these. I did one the other day, and uh, you know it seemed like there was a lot of interest, a lot of interaction, a lot of comments. So I definitely, uh, you know, I'll keep doing these. I enjoy doing them, and uh, I don't mind taking you guys on a journey and sharing the wealth. So definitely hit that like button if you uh, enjoy these videos. Leave a comment. Ball and another interesting brand to do research on. And its well-known brand is Ralph Lauren. Of course, that is an excellent brand. We see it all the time. When you buy the right thing, profits are high. Yep. Lambskin leather jacket for three fifty sold for two twenty two. Wow. Yeah, Ralph Lauren is definitely one of those brands you could bring in crazy amounts of profit. Let's see if we got anyone else in the house. Dave Hester, what is happening? Tom Bear. Yeah, thanks for the brand. We're gonna beat this brand up a little bit. See what we could find. Picker Bill, new full-time seller here. Just get me through college. Good to have you here. All right, let's get back into this brand. So, so far we noticed that the polo shirts, they're doing decent, but if you start at low in the auctions, they don't really seem to bring in a ton of money. Uh, the jacket did really well. The button fronts were eh, okay. Um, short sold. The fleece did pretty well. Let's see, we got a T-shirt that went for 10 Another long sleeve t shirt, $15.99, not bad. 
Here we have a sharp looking button front shirt it looks like. Let's see, I think it's a long sleeve. Let's check this out. Yeah, we got a long sleeve shirt in this brand. Nice color to it. I like how it has the stitching around the collar. It's definitely a very uh, interesting design right there. It looks like some little mini checks. 1995 plus 695 to ship. So it definitely looks like these things are selling um, for some good profit. You might want to pick this brand up if I see it. Um, I think I'm going to definitely pick it up if I get it cheap enough. See, here's another jacket or a windbreaker, 3850. So it looks like those things are really bringing in the best profit so far. Here we got another polo. A button front shirt looks like it went for $34.99 with a best offer. And I mentioned this the other day. If you want to figure out how much an item actually sold for, if it has a line through it, which means they accepted the best offer, just click on the actual listing, go down to print, and that'll bring up the uh, the price that it sold for. So it looks like they took a best offer of $25. Not bad at all. Definitely some room for profits there. Wow, here we go. We have a really nice, it looks like a, a one-fourth zip sweatshirt, long sleeve, $44.99. So it looks like the bigger items are definitely bringing in more money, which is pretty much true for any brand. Usually the coats and jackets or the suits, they bring in more money than like a polo shirt. Here we have a nice long sleeve shirt. Look at all those pockets, $18.99. Another button front shirt, $18.99. Pair of shorts, $7.99. I'm looking for, you know, I'm going to type in, I'm going to go over to the sidebar and type in a minimum price of 50. I want to see if anything pops up really expensive in this brand. We have a watch. It looks like they make watches too. So here we go. We have a nice puffer jacket right here, 56. Another one of those fleeces it looks like or some type of jacket, 65. Looks like we have a pea coat for 59.99, another jacket, Gore-Tex. $4.95, all right, so I guess these jackets retail for a lot of money. That's interesting. Another jacket, $99. So it looks like, as you can see, the bigger items are really bringing in the profit. Wow, take a look at this sweatshirt. Beautiful. $79.99, two bids. Very, very nice. Has the logo on the front. Looks like it's ribbed in style. Has the little patches. Cotton and nylon blend. So definitely a brand that um, you might want to look at picking up. I, I guess I would focus on the bigger items, the sweatshirts, the fleeces, the pea coats, the jackets, the windbreakers. Um, the button front shirts seem to do well, but I think you want to stick to the ones with the nice designs and maybe a brighter color. Here we go again, another jacket. Yeah, so the jackets are really where the money stands with this brand right here. Here's a vest. Looks like a goose down vest. All right, so I think we beat this brand up enough. Bigger items are going to bring in bigger profits for you. Let's check the comments out real quick, see what's happening in YouTube land. And I know i got to figure out this Google chat. Um, I'm definitely going to figure it out soon, but this is, again, kind of like spur of the moment. Just want to do a quick video. Yeah, you guys, check out Kentucky Tycoon. He's uh, got a really cool Facebook page. Definitely some good stuff. Won't be disappointed. Chris Morgan, yes, please keep doing these videos. You got it, just for you. Uh, picking up the pace. Just saw you on live. Love your videos. I've learned so much. I haven't seen you talk about vintage denim jackets. You should check them out. Levi's are the best, but other brands will do okay too. Yeah, the denim jackets definitely do well, and... Uh, that's a good topic for another video, but denim jackets definitely could bring you in some good money. The Dirty Nose, a picking company. Dirty Nose in the house. Another uh, really nice hustler right there, bringing in some profits. I know he's got an antique booth. He sells on eBay, Amazon, I believe. Definitely check him out as well. I, I know that he was making some pretty cool videos. Not sure if he still does, but uh, definitely a really good guy and a good resource for uh, valuable information. We got Darren Harry Ford. Not sure if I'm pronouncing your name right, but I appreciate you stopping by. Teach me, Steve. I'm watching. I'm going to do the best I can. Hopefully, you're learning something so far. And, um, all right. So, we're going to get on to the second brand right now. And the brand is Canali. I want to shout out Cool Toads and Ron Blanchard for, um, bringing up those brands on Facebook. If you guys don't follow me on Facebook, check me out. 
rake and profit just type it into the search bar on Facebook you should see me pop up just hit the like button and uh, you'll be able to follow my posts from there on you'll be able to see live hangouts like this um, I post little bolo items to be on the lookout for sales updates I even shout out youtubers who are doing a good job so definitely check me out over there and uh, you know join in on the fun so let's get into the second brand the second brand that we are going to be learning about and this was the first brand the second brand we are going to be talking about is Canali and this is a brand that I definitely pick up I know it's a good brand and I know it can bring you in some really good profits so uh, let's type this brand in and see what pops up okay my computer is at risk so we're gonna go under pre-owned because that's what most of the stuff we're gonna be finding at thrift stores we are going to leave up all the different styles for now and just see what pops up US only is clicked and sold listing so let's see what's going on here so already we're, I'm noticing that I see a lot of blazers I see sport coats I see suits it looks like that's what's selling just off the bat and uh, in my new program blazing profits this is definitely one of the brands that are in there one of the brands I suggest picking up one of the brands that can make you a lot of money and uh, let's just go over some different items in here and see what's going on looks like we got a really nice sport coat looks like it's a linen and wool blend size 42 small one thousand two hundred ninety five dollars brand new in stores so these things really could bring you in a lot of money off the bat I could already tell that the seller is uh, definitely experienced did a really nice took a really nice picture you got the sport coat looks like a three button style he's got it all propped up with the uh, the tie and the dress shirt and the pocket square nice item right there hundred and ten dollars definitely a nice profit take a look at the tag made in Italy definitely a good location to buy items from he's got all the measurements it looks like it has no vents and uh, yeah just a really nice item right there some more blazers some sport coats here's a suit really nice right there so you're noticing that the blazers the sport coats and the suits are selling Let's see if we could find any other items here we got a button front shirt looks like it is a spread collar I could tell 16 and a half by 42 minty fresh take a look at the tag I definitely sell these they do pretty well all right let's see what it's sold for so they're offering it for sixty nine dollars it looks like they took a best offer for I'm gonna guess thirty fifty five wow I usually sell these between twenty and forty bucks I usually don't sell them for more but uh, again if you take really nice pictures which this is okay um, if you take really nice pictures you provide measurements you you know you just put yourself out there you could get higher prices you just gotta be more patient at times but I know this is definitely a really nice brand to buy I like to put it up buy it now um, and I, I can usually get my price from willing to wait long enough as you can see I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail with the blazer sports coats and suits because I'm really gonna touch on that in the program but I uh, just take a look get accustomed to the styles the colors the designs and um, just try to mimic what you see and buy it in the store really nice design right here it looks like we got some dress pants size 35 by 28 it looks like they took a best offer for let's check this out originally selling for 59 so you can already see with this brand the price points the margins are a lot higher thirty dollars not bad at all you can pick that up at the thrift store for three or four bucks see them all the time margins seem to be a lot higher with this brand as you can see with the blazers sports coats and suits they bring in a a lot of money here we have a Ralph Lauren polo not sure why that's in there I'll give you one tip when it comes to this brand and just sports coats and suits and blazers in general cashmere it's definitely a material that you want to pick up when it comes to these items definitely this brand as well could bring you in some really good money so it looks like the dress pants are selling as well let's see what other styles they have in this brand that are selling let's take a look at a sweater I don't think I've ever sold a sweater in this brand look at the price points 74 79 69 obviously there's some best offers so it's a little less 75 so the sweaters are bringing in some money let's check out what material this was that sold because 75 dollars is a lot of money for a pre-owned sweater as you can see there's the tag 
I'm gonna guess Casimir or Wall. Hundred percent Wall. Wow, definitely a nice item right there. If you guys have any questions or anything you want me to touch on in terms of these items, just leave a comment. Let me know. But I'm pretty much just going through the process that I go through when I'm researching. You know, I'll type in a brand or I'll just search a a style or maybe something in general just overall and just go through each item and look at it take a look at the pictures the the keywords the uh, the listings the price points there's a lot of stuff to study coats and jackets let's check that out real quick so it looks like we got ourselves a pea coat right here or an overcoat it's bringing in some good money what do we have here a leather jacket 99 bucks I would have thought it could have brought a lot more money than that I mean, so as you can see, this brand brings in a lot of money. It's uh, definitely bringing in a lot more than the Victoria Victoria Knox brand, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Probably going to be a little harder to find than the first brand, but if you find it, definitely scoop it up. Some good money here. Let's check the comments real quick, see if we have any questions. Yeah, and if you have any tips or... If you guys search the sold and the completed listings a certain way, definitely let me know. I'm interested to know how you guys go about your research. But uh, this is pretty much one of the techniques that I use. Let's see. Oh, i got to approve that comment. All right. Let's see who else is in the house. Rusty Shackleford. Bought 101 literally seconds ago. Do a lot of antiques, but you're pushing me into clothing a little more lately. Picked up a corduroy territory. I had three dollars a pearl snap, one dollar and two polo button fronts, fifty cents each. I like how you're getting in low and a pair of Carhartt Arctic overalls. New with tags, five dollars. Oh my God, you're blowing my mind right now. I was just at Savers the other day and they had a brand new with tags Carhartt overalls as well, but they wanted fifty nine ninety nine, which you know, it's still a good deal for someone who's looking to buy at retail just because they're probably a lot more than that in the store. But uh, $5, I mean, you are going to make a killing on that right there. Do a search on Bill's khakis. Button-ups can be hard to find. Always 30 to 40 used. Yeah, I, I've looked at that brand. I've, I, I know that it's a really good brand, but I've never found it. I'm hoping eventually I will. Palm Beach Picker. Hello, everyone. A little late getting here. So busy listing. Lost track of time. You're too busy making that money. Let's see who else we got here. And again, I apologize for having to bring you through all these comments. I'm going to definitely try to figure out how to uh, get that Google thing set up. Thanks for the videos. How do you ship your sport jackets? Um, I've touched on this a few times. It really depends. Uh, it depends on the weight, the location that you're shipping, and the dimensions of the item. Some items are going to be bigger or smaller. So, I mean, I could ship it. I'll give you one example, maybe legal flat rate. Another example would be maybe a zone A or a zone B box, maybe a medium flat rate. Or if it's really heavy and it's going far, maybe I'll put it in a plain, blo plain box and do it parcel of priority. But it really depends, like I said, on the weight, location, uh, and the dimensions. But hopefully that helped. I'm going to be touching on all the different ways to ship these items um, in my, my new program, Blazing Profits, which should be out probably in uh, hopefully a month. I just got a few more things to put together. All right. Kentucky Tycoon, anytime, my man. Gary S. Step in the house. What's the deal, Rakin? Thanks for all the great videos and the fantastic ebook. Peace. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, you know reaching out, leaving a comment. The ebook. Uh, I mean, anytime you put out a product, you're always going to get people that love it and hate it. And uh, in terms of 101 killer killer clothing brands, to be honest, out of you know the hundreds of pe hundreds of people who have bought the book. I don't think I've gotten one bad response, which is kind of blowing my mind because you guys know how it is. Anything in life you put out, any opinion that you have, anything that you create, there's always going to be haters. But um, yeah, I really haven't had one bad thing about it, which is just like I said, surprising. But you know, if you're going to hate on it, it's kind of hard to because it's. I know that it works. It's what I do. It's what I, I use. The brands that are inside, all the information, I use it. And I know it works. So um. Yeah, I mean, if you guys are just getting started selling clothes, or even if you're an intermediate or an advanced, definitely check out that uh, the book that I created about probably three or four months ago, 101 Killer Clothing Brands. I'll leave an annotation on the screen after the video, or just type in 101 Killer Clothing Brands into Google. It'll pop up, 
and uh, it's definitely a really good resource. You know, it's not necessary for your success, but it'll definitely fast track your success and give you a lot more information. Um, you know, in a shorter period of time. All right, Picker Bill, thoughts on Orvis? Orvis cord sport coats. I'm not sure what the cord means, but um, Orvis sport coats they do extremely well. Look out for the tweed ones, the ones with the leather buttons. Orvis is definitely a really uh, awesome brand that I really like buying. All right, let's get moving on this brand, Canali. So we're pretty much done with that. We pretty much summarized it, and we noticed that the sport coats are doing well, the suits are doing well, the blazers are doing well, the sweaters are doing well, the button front shirts are doing well. Pretty much everything in this brand is doing well. Um, I do suggest if you're going to sell like the button front shirts, do a buy it now because if you start it lower than auction, you might not get what you want. But uh, definitely a higher end brand could bring in some more profits for you and keep your margins a lot higher. So uh, brand number two is out of the way. We beat that brand up. And the next brand I'm going to talk about is a brand that I would never heard of before. And I'm really happy that I'm doing this live hangout tonight. I'm really happy that I put out the message on Facebook asking you guys to uh, mention some brands because this is a new brand that um, I'm really interested to look up. I looked it up real quick before the Hangout just to make sure stuff was popping up, and uh, it seems to be a really good brand. The brand is Ten Hall, and I want to shout out Troy Greenwalt for mentioning that on my Facebook. I appreciate that. I guess he said his mother mentioned it, and he wasn't sure about it. So uh, let's let's dive into this brand and see what it's all about. The brand is Ten Hall, T-I-N-H-A-U-L, like a Hall video. All right, we're going to... Erase Canali and type this brand in. Get that out of there. And again, if you guys are just tuning in, make sure to hit that like button. I mean, don't hit it too hard, but just give it a little tap. Let me know that you guys like these videos. Let me know if uh, you know you want me to do anything new in the future. If you have any ideas for videos, leave a comment. Let me know what you think because uh, you know I really want to add value to your your lives. I want to help you out to make more money. I want to put you guys in a position to make that money. It's really what it's all about. Money doesn't mean everything in this world, but uh, you know, it definitely helps to uh, have it, and uh, it definitely helps to have the, the information that could assist you in making more. It's all about education. So it looks like there's some some boots popping up. We're gonna we're gonna go under men's clothing, huh? When I was looking it up before, it looks like a lot more sold. What am I doing wrong here? I looked this brand up before the live hangout just to make sure there was information about it. Let's maybe look under the completed, see what's going on. All right. So the brand is Ten Hall. It looks like let's just keep it. Let's just keep it up and just see what we find. We're not going to go into the men's clothing, but I remember looking and the button front shirts were selling pretty well. Maybe I have an option that's clicked wrong but uh whatever let's roll with the punches so the brand is Tin Hall we got all the options open under the clothing shoes and accessories and right off the bat I noticed that the boots sell for some really good money 186 125 and I'm actually under the completed listings now so we're going to see items that sell and that don't sell as well this didn't sell right here looks like we have some more boots 197 305 100 look at the designs holy moly this is crazy Wow, look at this design. These are amazing. Tin Hall, gnarly, pink, shark, man, eater boots. Some interesting uh, keywords in there. Look at these things. Ridiculous. If the Bonafide Hustler is checking this out, let me know if you've ever hustled Tin Hall boots before. Really crazy looking. Wow. Let me know in the comments. Have you folks ever heard of this brand? Have you ever hustled anything in this brand? Do you have any advice for buying and selling in this brand? Any comments that you have, I definitely would appreciate it. But like I said right off the bat, the boots are selling for some ridiculous profits. The crazier they look, it seems the more they're bringing in. Look at this. you got the, the teeth, the eater, the shark as keywords. Looks like these are women's right here, women's whippet boots. Yeah, so the boots are definitely selling well. I would like to look more into the clothing. I'm not sure why nothing's popping up. I was looking earlier, and I noticed that there were some men's clothing that were selling within this brand. Let me check out the comments, see what's going on. Maybe you guys caught something that I'm doing wrong. All 
48 people watching. Wow. A lot of people up right now. I thought that a lot of people maybe wouldn't be tuning in because, you know, it's Sunday and trying to get some rest for the week ahead. I don't know if you folks sell part-time or full-time. Let me know in the comments. Are you guys a full-time seller or a part-time seller? Do you do this as a hobby? Have you never sold an item before? Are you just learning? Let me know uh, how long you've been doing this and if you're part-time or full-time. Appreciate all the likes, 33 likes. Looks like we got some conversation going on here. Two raking videos in two days. That's what's up. Thanks for continuing to share the knowledge. That's what that's what I'm here for. I'm here to uh, you know pass on the knowledge. And you know, like I said, like I always say, the main reason why I love to share you know all the videos and the knowledge and you know just be out there is because when I first got started, you know, I was working in the restaurant industry. I was working at crappy jobs that I hated. And, um, you know, I, I tuned into YouTube. I started watching guys like the Bonafide Hustler, Redneck Picker, um, Hearts Motor Company, College Picker. I mean, guys that are still doing it now, and they really taught me a lot. And I was so grateful to learn from them and for them to pass down their knowledge to me that, you know, I'm so grateful now that I just want to give back to everybody. I want to share the wealth. I want, I want to help somebody out who's been in my position before. You know, I was broker than a joke. I was working at a crappy job. I was miserable. So I want to help somebody who's been in that position to uh, you know get out of it and maybe go full time or you know even help somebody to save up some money for a vacation or you know save up some money to put in their bank so they don't feel stressed like they're going from week to week stuck in a rat race so whatever I can do to help you know I'm here and uh, you know I'm here to assist Holland Hobbies I smashed the like button I think I broke my enter button hey don't break your enter button <laughs> Denise D sounds good thank you Holland Hobbies, I'm stockpiling suits, blazers, and sport coats. Don't know how to list them, but I'm buying quality ones waiting for your new release so I can learn how to list them. Can't wait. You're killing it. Yeah, like I said, uh, Blazing Profits is going to be my new course coming out within the next month or so. I mean, it's got a lot of information that's going to help you to sell blazers, sport coats, and suits. Uh, not only is it a 200, I think 266 or 275, I added a little more to it, somewhere around there, but let's just say 270 pages, the book, and it's going to cover a lot of topics from differentiating between all the items, how to ship the items, what items to buy, how to, um, what else is in it, I'm drawing a blank right now, <laughs> I'm so tired, I mean just a whole bunch of information on there, I mean I think I've got about 11 chapters, business models, like I said, brands to buy, how to ship them, how to store them. And also I have, let's see, I think there's 14 bonus videos. There's some cheat sheets of all the brands to buy. There's some bonus interviews. There's templates and extra resources like articles and videos to watch. I mean, it's just a, a pretty in-depth course that's really going to help somebody. So I'm uh, really excited about that. Let's see if we have anybody in the house. MSKC808, can you do a video on how to ship blazers? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be in my course. Like I said, there's a lot of different ways to uh, ship them just depending on the weight, the location, the dimension. So it's kind of hard just to give one answer. It's really, um, it can vary from, from item to item. Let's see who else we got in the house. All right, so that looks like it's it for comments. Let's get back into the tin hall. The Tin Hall, we're not hauling tin, it's actually a brand, Tin Hall. But the boots are really crazy. I'm really glad that I looked into this. Um, I know the button front shirts, this brand overall does really well. I would definitely suggest picking it up. And let's see. I feel like we should do one more brand. One more brand. Okay, we're going to do one more brand, and then I'm going to get off and get some sleep because when I'm tired, I don't even talk like a person, and I already feel like I'm not making sense. But leave a comment. Let me know one more brand that we could research and study. I'm going to let you folks on YouTube or Facebook, whoever's watching right now, choose. So I'm going to babble on for a few more minutes, and then I'm going to look into the comments and uh, choose a brand to research with you. One last brand. Hope everyone's been having a good day today. Things are going pretty well. Um, the sales are definitely coming in. 
trying to focus more on higher in items with higher in profit margins like I said before I used to be like when I first got started I would focus on you know I wouldn't mind selling items for 10 or 15 bucks and then as the the months went on I kinda rose it up to 17 and 18 then 20 then 25 now I'm really trying to focus on items like 30 35 40 dollars or more just because you're gonna notice when you start getting more experienced it's gonna be a lot easier to find items and like a lot of people when they first get started at least when I did when I was kinda of planning out how I was gonna scale operations up and make more money one of my biggest problems or one of my biggest concerns was how in the world am I gonna find enough inventory and I was really worried that I couldn't find enough inventory and the reason was because I only had let's say 20 or 30 brands in my memory banks that I that I knew to buy but as you get more advanced and you get more educated you're gonna know more items to buy and buying let's see let's see if I can make sense Having the ability to buy really high-end quality items that you could resell in your business for a profit is the least of your problems once you get more advanced. The harder problem is figuring out how you're going to take more pictures, how you're going to list more items, how you're going to manage your employees, how you're going to manage the shipment. I mean, these are issues that you're going to have to deal with more than having to find items. So all in all, what I'm trying to say is the more advanced you get, the more you educate yourself, the more it's going to be a lot easier to find these types of items. So. Um, Let's go into the comments and see what is going on. Let's see if we could find one more brand to research together. Then I'm going to head out and get some sleep. Let's update just one more time. 54 people watching. Wow. Shout some people out. Leave a comment. I'll shout you out. If you got a Facebook group that you started or maybe you have a YouTube channel or you want me to plug something for you leave a comment I'm here to like I said share the wealth and uh, you know keep growing keep growing this community let's see do vintage LL Bean many may not know the value alright let's just see what we have and I'll choose one John Gums ties I'm planning on adding to the blazers and suits I bought a couple of lilies yeah it's definitely nice to prep them up all right, Hearts Pickers, Billy Raid. I don't even think I've heard of that before. But you want to know what? This guy, he's a clever guy. hes I know he's got something up his sleeve with this brand. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what else we got, but I might have to look at that. Arbitrary Lifestyle, full-time buyer, part-time seller here. Never heard of Tin Hall, but obviously I'm going to look out for it now. So many brands out there, and I appreciate you pointing them out one by one. No problem. I'm here to help. And I know that uh, Josh, my buddy Josh with Arbitrary, Arbitrary Lifestyle just started a uh, Facebook group. I'm trying to remember what it what it was called. I think it's the Thrifting Lounge. Check them out. I um, him and um, my buddy Kevin they started up the uh, the Facebook group just recently. I think they're up to about 140 or 150 members. So uh, I've been kind of tuning in over the last few days, and they got a lot of good information. So definitely check them out. I believe it's Thrifting Lounge, but uh, don't quote me on that. Check me out on Rake and Profit. I just shouted them out. Hearts Pickers, Hearts Motor Company, full time but only working part time hours. Yeah, I've been uh, kind of doing the same thing as well lately. The more experience you get, it seems like once you get operations moving in the right way, you can kind of take a little break and focus on other things. So, you know, I've been focusing more on the book, more on the Amazon Kindle business, Amazon, Craigslist, uh, YouTube. So, definitely haven't been putting in 40 hours a week recently I've probably been putting in maybe between 10 and 20 hours a week for the last few months just because I've been like I said I've been doing the book and uh, working on a few other businesses let's see so so far we have LL Bean and we have Billy Raid I believe Lily Pulitzer if I'm pronouncing that correct I've never researched that that's definitely interesting as well alright Ballin, if you don't mind, Steve, I'm going to plug a website. I get a lot of know-how from Styleform. Yeah, I watch his videos. What is his channel called on YouTube? Um, Real Style, Real Men, I believe it's called. He's got a really good channel. Definitely check this out right here if you want to learn more about just all different types of things that have to do with any type of clothing for a man. Tortoise Picker, what minimum sale price are you looking for? in a shirt for example uh, it really depends on your business model right now I probably wouldn't buy anything that I don't think I could sell for at least 25 or 30 but I really want to keep it at 30 alright JD Bing reselling part-time since February 2014 congratulations
Dan Wright said part-timer with a full-time job. Been out for four years. Can be busy, but picking is the fun job. Yeah, right? <laughs> All right. Jeremiah Burt won. That's why you aren't getting the results. I'm not sure what he's talking about. Lisa Centron. Oh, dang it. Almost missed you live again. Thanks for all your help, Steve. Things are picking up for me. Awesome. I'm glad to hear things are going well. I appreciate you tuning in. Ron Blanchard said at 15 minutes. It's not, that's why I'm not showing up. All right. So I think I'm going to choose – let's see what brand. I've, I've done L.L. Bean a lot. Definitely look at L.L. Bean. The vintage stuff as well, but I'm not going to choose that. One tip is look for the shirts that have the slanted pockets. That usually means they're vintage and they can sell for some good money. But I'm going to choose – I want to choose this brand right here from Hearts Pickers because – I've heard of Billy Reed. I don't know if I've ever heard of Billy Reed. Let's see what this is all about. All right. Okay, I think he meant Billy Reed. I think that's the brand he meant. Let's check this brand out see what it's all about. We're going to go under pre-owned. Then we're going to go under sold listings and just see all the items that sold. Yeah, I think this was definitely the brand he was looking at because I know I know Ronnie. I know the types of items he likes to pick up. He likes those expensive items. And uh, like I said, he's an awesome guy. He's got a great YouTube channel, Hearts Pickers, a.k.a. Hearts Motor Company. And... Uh, like I said, I went thrifting with him the other day. He's got a wealth of knowledge, definitely someone I look up to, a mentor. And uh, I suggest that you guys subscribe to him on YouTube and check him out. Look at the prices on these things. $139.99, $57.77. Take a look at this seller right here. I've researched him before. He's got some ridiculous items for sale that sell for some really good profits. What's his – let me shout him out. CPAR 4746. I think this is the guy. Let me check him out real quick. If I remember correctly, this guy sells his items for ridiculous prices. Yep, this is him. Check out some of the, the, the prices this guy gets. Fifty-seven seventy-seven, thirty-seven seventy-seven. I mean, he loves these sevens. I guess he's using that psychological tactic for prices. But look at what this guy's selling. He doesn't sell often. Well, it's not too bad. But check this out. Wow. Those are the type of price margins that I would definitely like to get to eventually. I mean, look at this. This is craziness. All right. I X'd out of it by accident. Let's get back there. I'm sorry about that. But, yeah, it's amazing some of the price points people are selling items for. So yeah, this item, this brand is pretty ridiculous. It looks like they're bringing in some crazy, crazy profits. 29, 30, 23, 38. Looks like we got some shoes, 85, 57, some more shoes. You, you want to know what? Now I know why all the items were selling for so much. I think I must have the price set at $50 or more. So maybe items aren't selling for that ridiculous because I do see some lower ones now, $30, $19.99. Here's a polo shirt, $24.99. So I apologize for that, but it still looks like a good brand. I see a button front only went for $14.50. $179.99. only went for $10. Let's check this out real quick. Billy Reed waxed hunting jacket. I sold a I sold a wax jacket recently. Well, a few months ago, the brand was Barber, B A R B O U R. Definitely a good brand to be on the lookout for. Look at all the pockets on this thing. It just looks like a quality item. This is the type of item that I'm looking for. Something like that. Kind of reminds me of something you would find in the Banana Banana Republic brand for like the vintage Safari stuff, or maybe like an Orvis, or maybe even like a vintage LL Bean. Definitely a cool item right there. 165 buckaroos. Here's the tag. Let me have you guys check this out right here. It looks like it's a two extra large. I want to say it's a polo shirt. But let's double check that. Standard cut. No, it's a button front shirt. 
Hmm. I like how they have the little diagram there showing how the measurements are taken. That's definitely useful for a buyer. But yeah, the brand Billy Reed, it seems like so certain items are selling well. The bigger items seem to do well. The polo shirts even seem to sell. The button fronts are selling. Shoes are doing pretty well. Here's a tie. It looks like it's running $22.50. So there we go. There's the uh, the last brand I'm going to talk about. I'm going to check the comments one last time, shout some people out, and uh, like I said, get to bed. My eyes are like shut, and I can't even keep them open right now. Having too much fun. But um, <clears throat> how does Natural Issue sell? I'm not sure if I've ever sold that brand before. I'll definitely check that out. Yeah, hard speaker said Billy Reed can't type her right. Hey, don't worry, man. I can't even talk right now. I don't even know if I'm making sense in this video. Ted Baker, I see those dress shirts a lot. Yeah, those things sell. Sometimes they take time to sell, but um, like if you're talking about like button front shirts and whatnot, but definitely a higher end. I believe it's a London brand. Palm Beach Picker, Rain Spooner, or Ryan Spooner. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I do know that brand sells well. Definitely keep an eye out for that. Sherry Harrison, you're awesome, Raken. I haven't done any videos yet, but I would love if I would love it if you would check out my YouTube page, Sherry Harrison. I would also love it if you visited my Facebook page, Models with Brains. Absolutely. I appreciate the uh, the plug, and uh, everybody check her out. I will after this video. Palm Beach Picker, full-time, 12 years. Wow, you've been doing your thing for a while. Steve, for the 10 hall cert, you still had your minimum value at 50. Oh, yep. Even with the Billy Reed, you had to set at 50. Yeah, I know. I realize that. I, I apologize, guys. Sometimes you got to check the sidebar to make sure that the options that you choose are applicable to what you're looking for. So I apologize for that. Uh, let me check this tin hall out one more one more time without the uh, minimum thing set. See what we could find. Thanks for that. Oops. Because I remember when I was looking. What am I doing? Now I'm under women's shoes. Here we go. Pre-owned. Let's make sure I don't have it set. Okay, yeah. So these items are selling. It looks like it looks like here's a pearl snap shirt. Only brought seven ninety nine. Not that impressive. Uh, maybe because it was just plain white. Here's another one with plaids and checks. Looks a little more attractive. Looks like it sold for 30 Buy it now. Let's see what it sold for. There's the tag. I'm going to guess it went for 20 Let's see what it brought in. Wow, I didn't even know that. That's cool. All right, so that brought in 20 Another pearl snap. Didn't really do that well. Looks like this didn't do that well either. Here's the jeans, 31 bucks. So it looks like you really want to focus on the boots. It looks like the men's clothing isn't doing particularly well. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of them selling. Let's look at the completed listings real quick to see. Yep, not sold, not sold. Looks like this guy, <laughs> this one guy is trying to sell this shirt so many times. He's putting a one-day auction, it looks like. May 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. What is this guy doing? He's really trying to sell that shirt. Oh, my gosh. I think you might want to try to change the uh, the price or something. Yeah, so maybe you want to stay away away from that brand when it comes to the men's clothing. I don't see a lot of it selling, and the stuff that is selling isn't selling for that high of, of margins. So I think I would stick with the boots. It looks like that's really where the uh, sweet spot is. But I'm just going to check the uh, comments one more time, see if there's any more questions. And if there is, I'll answer them. If not, I'm going to roll out. 53 people watching. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, Hit that like button if you like these videos. I'd appreciate it. But uh, hopefully everyone's doing well. Hopefully, you know, people are making money. So many different avenues to sell. I mean, eBay is just one of them. There's Craigslist. There's Etsy. There's Amazon. There's flea markets. There's Facebook groups. I mean, the, the list goes on and on and on. There's so many different ways that you can sell these items. So many different types of items. I mean, clothing is just one little niche. So many other niches out there. But I just I love clothing because it's just so easy to find. I mean, you go into any thrift store and there's hundreds and thousands of pieces. Go to yard sales, people just are throwing it out. They don't even want it. Roseanne, Judah Elliott, would you sell a rough one cashmere sweater if it had a small hole in it? Yeah, absolutely. Someone will still buy it. I've sold one before with a hole in it. I think I got I sold a really nice one before for like 
what was it, maybe 60 or 70 with a hole. I think I sold mine for like 20 or 30. It'll sell. Even the Pendletons will sell with holes. Certain items will sell. Chevy SN first. I am a couponer and I've been doing really well on eBay the past couple of months. Love your videos. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. David Wood, John Henry. I guess he's suggesting a brand. I'll have to take a look at that after. OJC321. Hey, Raking got myself a Ralph Lauren bucket cap for $1. eBay it for $21. Not sure what currency that is, but thanks for the videos. Awesome. It looks like you made some good money. Picking up the pace. Part time picker here watching this live from my hotel room at Disneyland. Oh, you're making me look so bad. I'm just in Connecticut in my room right now. I want to be in Disneyland. Your advice contributed to my kids having a great time at Disneyland. Thanks for everything. Well, that that's awesome. That makes me feel wonderful. I'm glad I could assist, but really, you got to give yourself the credit because, you know, I'm making these videos. I'm doing my thing, but you want to know what? You took the time to watch the videos. You took the time to educate yourself through what I'm sure is various avenues. I'm sure you watched various videos, and you got to give yourself the credit because not only did you watch the videos and educate yourself, but you took action on it, and that's really what the most important thing is. So uh, keep up the good work. Brian McCammon, question, do you generally get better fines in a particular part of town? Absolutely. I have a certain part of town that does really well. Um, the prices are you know, lower, and it seems like I'm always finding gems, and I think it is – it mainly has to do because maybe it's a lower end part of town. It's kind of set back. It's not really where the populated area is. And uh, it, just, it just seems like I find a lot of gems at that one place and it's cheap, like I said. Whereas maybe if I go to like another Goodwill in like a different town, the prices are higher. There's a lot more foot traffic. There's a lot more people going through. Not to say that I can't find an amazing deal at this at the, at the one that doesn't seem to do as well. But... I definitely have my honey holes, my sweet spots, and uh, I'm sure anybody who's been in the game for a while, hitting up thrift stores, they definitely have their sweet spots, the places that just seem to bring in uh, you know, the best items. But a lot of times, too, it's, it's kind of like a psychological thing where it's like you go into these thrift stores with the mindset that, you know, this is my honey hole, this is where I find the good stuff, and as a result, you take more time to look. You're really more thorough, and you find more stuff. So, I mean, don't don't tell yourself that you can't find anything at a certain thrift store, and then you know, kind of be lazy and don't look through everything because you really got to look through everything if you want to find the deals. I mean, you could kind of pick and look around if you want, but I find the best deals usually by just sweeping through a whole thrift store, and being quick. Kentucky Tycoon, do you ever think you would branch out from selling clothing? I mean, I do sell a lot of different other types of items. I sell books, DVDs, CDs, bikes, household items, uh, video games. Um, I mean, anything, really. If, if it looks valuable, I'll pick it up. Um, so, I mean, clothing is definitely my niche. It's definitely what I'm most educated on. It's what I got the most knowledge with. You know, I feel the most comfortable with it. But, I, like I said, I sell a lot of other items. Bicycles is another thing I sell. So, um, you know, I always try to diversify because you can't just put all your eggs in one basket. In one basket, it's really, in my opinion, it isn't the smartest thing to do. Ron Blanchard, keep great job, keep up, keep it up. Love it, learning so much. Awesome, glad I could assist. Brenda Robinson tried to list the men's Burberry shirt on eBay that I got from Goodwill. Said it had to be authentic. How do you prove that? Um, anytime you you list the Burberry brand, there's going to be a thing that pops up on eBay that says, "Are you sure that what you're selling in this brand is authentic?" Um, I can't even talk right now. It's real. Um, they want you to authenticate it, but um, just click OK. But if you want to figure out if it's real or not, the best thing to do, because I'm honestly I'm not that great at authenticating items, the best thing you could do is join a popular Facebook group or, you know, probably the Facebook group's the easiest. Join some Facebook groups and just post the picture and ask is it real or not. And you'll get people that have been experienced a lot longer than me. People that have been around a block for years and years, they can tell you if it's real or not. Another thing you could do is to search Google, go to the actual store, go to the Burberry store and see if you can find the tag. Also Google how to authenticate a Burberry shirt and it will talk about certain things like how the tag should look, the stitching, um, any signs that will tell you if it's real or fake. So those are definitely a few ways you can do it. Holland Hobbies, if you're ever in Indy, look me up. I'd love to hit the shops with you. The Goodwills in Indy are usually loaded. So many Goodwills in Indy, probably 30 to 40 stores within a 35-minute drive Oh my, or 35-minute radius from me, and that includes three Wayne Pays. You or CP should hit me up. I'm about to leave the house right now and head out to you. Wow. 30 to 40 stores within 35 minutes. 
I hate you. <laughs> I'm actually um, planning on going going with my mother on a trip probably within the next few months and uh, you know we always spend some good time mother and son quality time and she does a lot of like the the Amazon and the scanning books and uh, you know I'm more of the clothing and other types of items but we're trying to plan a trip within the next few months I think for let's see what what what's the date we discussed um, I think it's the end of July July to August 1st, some, some, somewhere around there, August 1st maybe, we're trying to plan a trip, so maybe we're going to hit up Massachusetts or Rhode Island or maybe Philadelphia or New York. We're trying to figure out a place somewhere around Connecticut, so if any of you guys are watching that live in any surrounding states of Connecticut, let me know if you have like a location that has a lot of thrift stores in one area because... You know, I, I want we want to travel out somewhere, but we want to make sure that there's a lot of thrift stores. I mean, I wish that there was 30 to 40 stores within a 35 minute radius of wherever we go, but I don't think there's any really hot spots like that. Um, we already hit up Mass pretty well in Rhode Island, so we kind of want to go somewhere different. Maybe even Pennsylvania. If anyone's from Pennsylvania, hit me up, and uh, you know, if we go out to where you are, if you have any suggestions, we'll definitely meet up with you and hit some thrift stores. That would be a lot of fun. <laughs> Jeremiah said, get rid of the $50 minimum. I know. I'm losing my mind. Just sold a barber shirt today. Awesome. The Dirty Nose Picking Company had to take a break from making videos. Started a new company. <laughs> Laugh out loud. I'll be making more in the future. Thanks for the shout out. Anytime. Yeah, I really enjoyed your videos, man. You had some good stuff, really good information. And, uh, you know, I like seeing how other people run their business. Everyone has tips. Everyone has information that they could offer that, you know, holds value. So, you know, if you're thinking about starting a channel but you're thinking, eh, I don't think I could, you know, I don't have any type of information that would help people, that's not true at all. Trust me, everybody's got something that they possess that could off that could, you know, be of value to somebody. So definitely don't uh don't underestimate yourself. MSKC eight oh eight, part time seller from Hawaii. Wow, I've always wanted to go to Hawaii. Justin Starcher, what's up? Justin Starcher, man, he's been killing it with the videos lately. I just shouted him out recently as well. Check out his YouTube channel, Justin Star Justin Starcher. He's got some good inspiring and motivating stuff. And some also some pretty good content too that'll get you uh, get you moving in the right direction. And uh, it looks like that's it for now. Kurt Kiefer. I came in at number 29 watching. Now it's up to 54. You have a real knack for these videos. Please, please keep them coming. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video so far. I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm tired right now. I don't even know if I'm making sense. I'm just, uh, you know, trying to have some fun with you guys, just going about my routine, scanning the sold and completed listings, just, uh, you know, educating myself because that's key. If you want to stay, you know, ahead of the competition, you want to find a lot of valuable stuff at the thrift store, education, education, education. That's really what it's all about. The more you educate yourself, the more you invest in yourself, um, you know, the more the more knowledge you put into your brain, the better you're going to be. So, uh, you know, don't never sell yourself short in terms of education. So that's it. I'm going to uh, roll out of here for now. I appreciate everybody watching. Again, if you guys like these videos, hit the like button. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Subscribe to my channel if you, uh, if you haven't already. And um, if you're interested in learning more about selling clothes, definitely check out my latest clothing guide, 101 Killer Clothing Brands. And uh, I've mentioned it before. I'm sure you guys already heard, but uh, it's 101 Brands. It's got a picture for each brand, a picture of the tag, which is super important because when you're flying through the clothing racks, you got to know what the brand the tags look like. I talk about what items to buy within each brand, items that you want to avoid, the risk that's involved with each brand, and that's taken into consideration sell-through rates. And um, I know there's a few more pieces of information and also a jackpot item. So uh, maybe, for example, you look at the brand Canali or Victoria Knox. Maybe a jackpot item would be a Casimir Pico for Canali or a jackpot item for the Victoria Knox brand. If I'm pronouncing that right, would be a, let's say, 100% nylon jacket. So definitely a lot of good information in a 101 Killer Clothing Brands guide. could save you a lot of time and could definitely put some money in your pocket. I can't say enough. Education is key. The guide is 20 bucks. I mean, it's not necessary for your success, but again, is $20 worth it to you to make hundreds and thousands of dollars over the next few years? 
But uh, yeah, Blazing Profits will be coming out soon. That's my next program slash course. Should be out within the next month. And uh, it's a 200, let's say a 270 page book, I believe. Somewhere around there. Ebook. 14 bonus videos that are going to walk you through all different areas of buying and selling blazers, sports coats, and suits. I've got a cheat sheet of 99 brands to buy and sell. I've got other various templates that are going to help you out, and also some bonus video, video um, bonus interviews with other expert sellers of clothing that could, uh, you know, really assist you. And we talk about a lot of different types of information that, you know, could help one in their clothing business because there's so many different pieces to the puzzle when you're trying to put it all together and make your clothing business, you know, operate smooth. So uh, again, I appreciate everybody watching. Hit the like button, comment, subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.